This may not be the most cosmetically appealing uh, DS2 on the planet. Um, this is one I've had for a while here, and I'm working down the panel. I'm going to do touch-ups. Got all the rust scraped down and treated out, and uh, it was yeah, in bad shape. But I had to do a lot of board rebuilding and stuff there. I finally got it where you can sometimes reset it once to get the poly section running. It seems to be <laughs> tolerable now. Not sure why it was doing that totally. Actually, I had a bigger capacitor in there, and that helped. Uh, it, sometimes chips will glitch when you put too big of a cap in the 5 volt supply. And we had 1500 instead of 1000, I discovered there. And so, hmm. I'm doing a modification here, though. I pulled out the original switch, which just gives you a switch for the glide between a 1 meg resistor and, and extend extends your 100k pot with a 1 meg resistor, so you get very little variation. It's really hokey. So I decided to replace it with a 5 meg potentiometer I had in my drawer. Now we get instead of three and a half seconds, we get a nice long line. You can hear the stepping almost at that speed, you know, it's 12 bits. Of course, this um, we will explain how this synthesizer works. This is the original digital controlled oscillator synth, and I did a bunch of brushing up last week so I can explain everything about this thing. <laughs> it um, has um, very uh, crude, of course, 1978, just using TTL and uh, CMOS chips to do all of the functions in here, and. Um, You've got your divide down organ down here in the DS2. The DS1 didn't have that, and it didn't have one of the LFOs. There's your two uh, envelope generators. There's two sections there for the VCF and the VCA. And uh, those are your delays for the LFOs. And um, yeah, all the filter is right there. and then it jumps back to that pin on that resistor in the far back corner to the VCA and um, these cards are all your digital stuff uh, you got a card here with just uh, uh, collecting of voltages and some capacitors there which I added one that was a little bigger to quiet down even a little more on that one on the 12 volt this one is your uh, tuning of your two oscillators there and I actually hooked up wires so I could tag onto them to test them and um, the DCO 74LS221 chips on there and some uh, charge control and your bender of course which I've got a temp bender handle here is um, I had to build a spring for this thing too the spring broke oh. <laughs> Got it working pretty good there. I think I may use this one though. It's just too many quirky things like that. I hate to release it on somebody else not knowing what might happen next. <laughs> Sell my good one in the other room, which is lovely. It's in perfect shape, pretty much. And um, and then uh, we got one from Max Lawrence. Max, where are you? I I've got Max's here that he wants me to fix. I need to do it next while I'm in the mood, but. Um, this is your uh, card with all the uh, modulation stuff on it and um, two LFOs there making different waveforms and and um, yeah I've got uh, most of the pinouts all added to my schematics. The schematics weren't real great on it's one of those things where you had to go through and mark a lot of things and um, anyway uh, but yeah this we will uh, thoroughly explain here but for right now I just wanted to uh, give you the the uh, beauty on this thing if you pull your little switch out and put that in I'm just gonna probably RV goop that in there and put a knob on it and away we go and now we've got a coarse and a fine uh, control sticking out the front panel rather than a switch which actually does not you know even connect it's it's one meg so you jump from 100k to 1 meg and it jumps it up to like 3 to 3.5 second zone in the ones I've got here. And so it goes from just a part of a second up way up there instead of 
having a continuum. So this way you've got a continuum and you can select um, any precise glide rate from uh, very fast. Oh, and also I added a little pot, the 10K resistor on the DAC card here. That will get you a tiny amount more speed, not very much, because that flip-flop can only run so fast. And I'll explain what's happening there uh, as we explain this circuitry. Really uh, elaborate uh, design for its day, emulating even it uses a DAC to uh, get the current pitch voltage out there to uh, the potentiometer here on this and then from that it goes to an op amp driven flip-flop feedback circuit that oscillates and um, it will oscillate at a rate dependent on how fast the cap charges up that's in the uh, feedback loop of the first op amp. Uh, it's got a 3.3 uh, nanofarad timing cap there and uh, that will charge up uh, and uh, flip the circuit at a rate that is dependent on what your resistor is set at in the portamento glide circuit. And it creates the K output, the clock, that then goes to increment the counter, which cha changes the 12-bit number that's representing your current pitch, basically. Anyway, for now that's good. <laughs> we'll get it up on the chalkboard later here and go through the details of how this critter works. But this is a uh, piece of engineering marvelness, of course. In the first version, the DS-1, uh, <laughs> I use words like that to sound silly. I'm not really uh, ignorant. I just live in Montana, so I have to say that to make people think, yeah, he's backwood fella, ain't he? <laughs> anyway, but... <laughs> so... Uh, the DS-1, they only made a hundred and some of and it lacks the second LFO, it lacks the polyboard, and um, and so on the panel you don't have all this stuff, the low pass, high pass for the poly and the on off and the modulation for the poly and you don't have the second LFO but you do have the sample and hold and stair step on the first LFO. Yeah, this one has um, the uh, up down saw. I had a DS1, I sold it to the SynthArc well, proprietor and he's got it in his collection now. So, yeah, there it is, and it's a nice one. It's in really good shape, but my other one's in really good shape here. And I've got it on the other bench because I just cleaned the pots and got it. I'm thinking maybe I'll sell it instead of this one and put that one in my studio. It's playing through the headphones right now. <laughs> but... Anyway, yeah, this one's in really good shape. There's very little wrong on this one, except it didn't have a cover, and so I've got to build a case top for it, really, to make it complete, complete. Get all that uh, strange naga hide or whatever they put on there. <laughs> yeah, kind of like what I'm doing my couch with, but wrong color. Yeah, the studio is going to have a covered couch instead of something that makes dust all the time. All right. All right, let's take a look at some waveforms now, shall we? Get your contrast here a little bit. How's that look? Okay, we've got your noise uh, signal here in the pink noise. There's your white noise. And now we're going to move on to no noise. And then we're going to go over to the... Um, Waveforms that we've got filtered down here. Let's see. Let's okay. This is curious. Well, let's do this one first. This is uh, here's DCO2 has the simpler selections. I got the triangle set right now. Okay, and um, now let's switch that. There's your sawtooth. You can see the steps there clearly. And uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, about 16 steps, that figures, huh? And there's uh, uh, 8 steps in the triangle wave, which sounds very rough. And then there's your square wave, nice clean square wave. Okay, let's go to DCO2, uh, uh, DCO1. Um, this one, square wave, has this odd 
artifact on it. I don't know why. <laughs> Everything else is cool. Well, here's the here's the PWM. That looks good. Maybe I still have an issue there. It's fairly minor. If it is, this is what I'm going to use in my studio anyway. Check out the other one. There's its um, there's its uh, triangle wave, which actually overlapping. It looks like Michael W. Smith's sweater on. Um, there we go. <laughs> on Michael W. Smith too. That's got your 16 step in it. Curious, they gave you two different resolutions there. And then there's your um, high res saw. Compared to the other saw you see, I see I saw the saw and oh, come on, stay there. <laughs> uh, the triangle. Whoops. There we go. See that one's a coarser resolution sawtooth. And there, so everything's coarser on the OS2. I don't know how they did those differently. I haven't studied into why that is yet. But anyway, saw one saw two. You can see those are quite different. So you get the coarser waveforms off the second oscillator on this one. Now, and you have your option input, which should have nothing on it, and uh, you have your poly input, which should have something if I start hitting notes. Um, great uh, feature for the... Oh, come on. Can't get the clip to grab. Great uh, feature for these would be to... Back to auto trigger. Ah, there we go. Okay kind of waveform on the poly section. Turn it down a little bit here. Then you mix them and you get that. Okay, so that's kind of the thing you expect on the outputs on this one. Um, DS2 has uh, a lot of circuitry there and I think we got most of it figured out, but I'm still not sure why the dual resolution <laughs> and um, also look and see how the wave shape converter varies on those two or if maybe there's a missing data bit uh, could be on this one but like I said this is the one I'm going to use in my studio and I'll get the bugs worked out on it as you can see the uh, we're testing those right on those of course there's your auxiliary which isn't hooked you could put a jack on the back for an internal also and I may do that on this one and then there's your DCO uh, two and one and your noise and your uh, poly section there uh, coming in and so yeah five inputs there one that isn't being used unless you hook a jack to it and put a coax down there for an external input to the filter and VCA which would be a fantastic thing to have on it but yeah this one uh, had a lot of issues and I'm working through the paint issues I just did a coat, base coat of um, stuff on this that still have to match it a little better but at least I'm getting the rust treated here and uh, this side hopefully will look like this soon I mean th that will this will look like that yeah ah now let's see what it all looks like mm -hmm. mixed on the output be quiet mm -hmm. I said be quiet no <laughs> mm -hmm. and I've got my uh, my glide set to um, something you, you, here's my glide in the full slowest range notes between there but anyway <laughs> hopping <clears throat> pretty cool huh that'll make for some nice nice effects um, <clears throat> let's see so there is uh, just we're looking at um, just oscillator two here's the other oscillator oscillator one Anyway, yeah, 
yeah, it gets to where you can't see the see the lines hardly there. It's very very. <laughs> Okay.